What's up everybody? <clears throat> um, starting this off with the first video of 2021. Um, this is going to be the video for uh, my feeders. Um, Y'all seen it on Facebook. I'm just now making this uh, the whole video. So uh, it's getting a little bit late. Hectic work schedule. Uh, just now I got to take my Christmas decorations down. So there's that and uh it's been raining everything so really haven't had time to do a whole lot of anything but um this is just gonna kick off the video for 2021 uh off season we're all getting ready for 3d i know most of us are some of the guys are still rabbit hunting um uh shed season started uh, guys out there looking for sheds and everything and uh I've been out putting feeders, mineral sites, getting all that ready. So these deer are getting nutrition through the winter. Going to be getting nutrition through the spring. And that's what this video is on. My DIY uh, deer feeders and mineral sites. And also, take you over here and show you um, just a DIY uh, backstop for your targets. Um, I just had stuff laying around. Uh, to make out of make this out of i had it last year through the summer and stuff um i just had this piece right here is rubber uh real thick rubber that was left here at my house it was actually in this dog kennel and uh i don't use the dog kennel so i was like man i'd really like to have a backstop because that field back there eats arrows i don't like it, it's un it's insane. I've lost, I don't know how many arrows back here. From either going through the target, and just me missing, because I miss, I do miss, I'm human. And, uh, mainly, my misses have been working on releases, trying to get them set up the way I want them and everything, so. I was like, man, I really need a backstop. And, uh, so I made this makeshift last year, just some wood that I had laying around, still using the wood that I had laying around. This is all stuff from when I finished my basement, uh, bathroom. It's just little stuff. I mean, just threw stuff together, threw the wood on there, and then found these rubber mats and stuff in this dog kennel and, uh, just screwed them in here. It actually holds up really well. Like, I've not had anything go through these. So, and I just added these on here because I found these in that dog kennel too. So hopefully these are just like vehicle floor mats. So I guess you could use those too. As long as something will slow your arrow down, stop it from going completely through, uh, I think it'll work. I know this, I know this thick mat right here works and stuff. So, but this is going to spin it off to uh, my DIY feeders and everything else. Hopefully, y'all enjoy and y'all can learn something um, from it. If y'all want to throw some input, some comments um, on how y'all do y'all's feeders. I know one of my buddies that lives up a little bit further north in the state, he messaged me and showed me a way that he does his feeders. And I might actually uh, do a couple that way because it seems pretty legit. Uh, but these are just some quick easy feeders less than a hundred dollars for i made four of them less than a hundred dollars and uh if you got the stuff laying around your house you can just use that but hopefully y'all enjoy this is going to be one of the first video this is the first video of 2021 and plan on having more to come i know i'm going to start doing some broadhead testing i just got my bow set up my expedite got it all set up got the arrows everything in so probably be doing my broadhead testing with that we're gonna be doing some durability penetration stuff um don't really want to ruin my arrows too much but it is what it is but yeah so here it is feeders and off-season prep hopefully y'all enjoy all right <clears throat> day two i'm putting feeders out of the property i got permission hold on this one's in uh lincoln county over here about 20 minutes from the house. This one's nice. I'm really actually excited about this one. This is the one I killed my, my doe at in muzzleloader season. So I'm pumped about this one. Uh, you can see here I got the 
the feeders there. Got one, two, and this third one there. There. But never ending, man. This, this is what gets me pumped, man. It's put in the work and hopefully get some deer in here and I tell you what, I've seen some good deer sign coming down in here since seasons went out. Uh, this is the first time I've been in here since season went out, really. And a uh, bunch of deer, bunch of good deer sign. And up on the road there, when you come down to the farm here, uh, I mean, deer trails just were slick coming over into this property. And um, big old bucks. You know, big old deer tracks um, from what I can see on in the mud and there's some big old deer tracks up here in the field beside the, the cow tracks and stuff and uh, I mean just big old deer tracks and uh, so got this set up I um, think I'm going to put my tree stand up there where those two trees are that are forked right there yep right there because that way I can watch there's a road over here that comes around and there was a uh, a good rub and scrape there this year and then uh to uh back here I actually ended up jumping like three or four deer in rifle season back there there's a flat over there we across the the drainage the creek drainage right there and it was tore up a buck sign too but I don't want to get over in there because I kind of want to be right in the middle of it to intersect all this right here. And uh, there's a field, a big old creek bottom down there. And the uh, creek comes in real pretty. Got these ridges coming off through here. Looks like good deer territory, and this is actually where I shot my doe at this year. I mean, this bench right here, I was actually coming in just doing a little scouting, muzzleloader season. Kind of just steel hunting, and uh, jumped two does right here. Uh, not, I can see where actually where I jumped them from right here, probably 65 yards up there. So, this is kind of in the middle of where I think these deer are going to be traveling. I'm going to put my mineral site down the back end of that bottom over there um the bordering property over here there's a big thicket coming out of that property into the creek bottom and it was tore up with deer sign i mean that creek bottom just had a trail war slick in it during rifle season um, that was the first time i got down in there really the last time that i went down in there too because uh i didn't really make it over here that much um but that creek bottom down there is where I'm going to put my mineral site. There's some down old logs and stuff down in there, stumps. I think I'm just going to pour it into those stumps, let it sink in, seek, seep in. I bet I can't talk. Um, and hopefully I can get them deer coming off that other property on my mineral site. Uh, that's what I'm hoping. And if, if it don't work, I mean, it's early, so I can always move it. And just, you know, if I'm not getting what I like out of it, I always move it. Uh, that's a good thing about getting out here early. It's January, so uh, getting them getting them prepared through the winter and uh, getting them fattened up for springtime. Uh, Going to have the minerals in here for when the bucks start growing their antlers and when the fawns start growing, so... Uh, I'm excited. I am really excited about this property. Um, it's real easy access to to get down here in it. Uh, family, some of my buddy's family, they hunt on the other side over there. So uh, I'm trying to stay away from them as much as I can. They seem to always be hunting over there. I mean, I came into their tree stands last year and seen their trail cameras and stuff. And my buddy actually told me... Uh, that they had talked to him and uh, said they had seen me. And, and uh, I apologize for it. I didn't know they were over there and uh, and stuff. So 
I'm excited. Uh, really, I think if I stay on this side and they stay on that side, I mean, there's plenty of, it's over 100 acres in here, so I mean, I think it'd be plenty enough, plenty fine, and they were here before I was, so if they have any problems, then I'll just back on out. I always respect the, the people that were here first, especially if it's family, but uh, it has some nice areas over here. I think this is going to be a tree stand spot, and down there in that bottom is going to be a ground blind spot. Uh, real easy access to get down in there, and there's road beds in through here too. Um, so getting in and out is going to be pretty easy. So I think the ground blind is going to be more of a, I'm going to have it for Courtney and stuff and a backup stand for if I'm not seeing anything up here, but I think I will. I really do because back here behind me, all this was timbered. So it's a bunch of downfall in there and stuff. And I think I'm near bed over in there and they'll work their way over wherever they're going they're good deer trails and everything coming over to here so fingers crossed um i'm hoping it all works out good other than that uh, time to go get the feed carry that all down here and then go put out the minerals put up the cameras call it a day but like i said uh, we're going to be doing a lot more stuff, so I'm pretty excited to get the get the group going and uh, hopefully get some good footage this year. Uh, again, thank y'all for the support, and God bless. I'm out. All right. <clears throat> Just going to go on our YouTube here. Um, we'll share it to our pages and stuff, but, uh, still getting off season started. I know, uh, I am at least, and I think, uh, some of the other guys, Timothy Thomas and them, they're ordering their minerals, getting their minerals sent in, um, from Forget Genetics. Uh, and so we're pretty, getting pretty stoked. I mean, it's, we're, we were saddened by the season ending, but excited for a new beginning and uh now i've just been out here where i killed stickers uh if y'all seen the instagram live uh you've seen me talking about it but i uh, came out here moved my feeders down a little bit uh, probably about 100 yards from where they were and uh made some new feeders uh I'll show you here this is really what this is about this kind of a how to to make your own feeder and not spend an arm and a leg on feeders um i basically made two feeders here that'll hold hopefully hopefully around 80 pounds um we'll see when i get them filled up if not then i'm going to move my older feeders down here and uh put them on the same area uh but fingers crossed um adding up a little bit here and there but it should hold quite a bit um but enough me talking about that uh, basically this all i did was uh take some four inch pvc go to you know any store um that sells pipe and stuff like that like home depot lowe's uh ace hardware stuff like that uh and you can get this um took four inch piece of pvc it's nothing not the hard stuff not the super heavy duty stuff or anything and then uh cut them five foot just got a 10 foot piece it was cheaper to get a 10 foot piece and uh cut them five foot cut them in half um took this little t here which i said it was like a, a clean out fitting or something i don't know you can get them they were, they were like eight or nine dollars um got that and then i didn't use glue or anything to get them to fit snug i just took some uh tape i used camo because that's what i had um just take some tape wrap it around there until it gets starts getting tight don't want to fall off there keep wrapping it keep wrapping it and then it'll hold and i can't get that off and i'm a fairly strong fellow i can't get it off uh but i did it on that 
and then up here on the top uh i just got a little plug here that'll fit thread it um for anybody that might be into plumbing sorry about that you know what all the terms are for these i think this is just a clean out um but just get that on there do the same up here with this fitting wrap it around till it gets tight like i said i can't get it off there and uh that gives you some easy access maybe keep water out of it a little bit better um not for sure fingers crossed hopefully it does and uh i just took this black pipe uh holder right here and they make it metal too that's what i was really looking for this is plastic but i mean it does the job uh just drilled it into the tree and then i took a ratchet strap down here ratcheted it down this one moves a little bit but it ain't going anywhere um and hopefully i mean you should have some good feeders there um it's a lot it's taller than my other ones over there and um bigger around so hopefully it'll hold more i know over there i can fit a 40 pound bag in both of the smaller ones up there so hopefully this will uh i'll be able to get enough in these but that's what i'm doing today also I'm gonna walk around here in a little bit after i get everything done see if i can't maybe find a shed or two of a bucket may have dropped his antlers a little early um i gotta go freshen up my mineral site and all that stuff so i mean it's never ending always a grind uh that's what happens uh when you want to grow them big bucks and you got property that you can do it on uh never ending i mean i wouldn't have any way any, any other way it keeps me in the woods gets me outdoors and keeps me from being lazy uh, so i mean that's just a, a simple diy uh, deer feeder you can use it for whatever um I know it's 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 just I mean I think I end up buying more than I really needed because I end up buying like sixty batteries too because those had them on sale or they said they were on sale I don't know if they really were or not but uh, so I ended up spending without buying the batteries it would have been like a hundred dollars um total for everything and i got enough to make two more at the other property that i'm going to be um hunting next year the one where i killed the doe at uh with my muzzleloader so i got enough so i can go up there put feeders out and then up here have feeders and uh it's about a hundred dollars so you go try and buy a you know feeder from store already built and stuff and it's going to be that just for one feeder so i've got enough for four feeders if i wanted to separate them for the same price of one and it's really not hard to put together so um that being said i'm gonna go put my minerals out check my cameras put my feed in and then get back home uh be coming back with a lot more videos this year last year was hectic um didn't get much um gonna be i plan on buying um a tacticam i know the other guys got gopros and stuff i'm gonna try and buy a tacticam so i can get um more self-filming in uh get some more kills in hopefully i'm gonna definitely get it done by turkey season and then uh hopefully be getting some turkey on the ground um that's another thing up here man i checked my cameras a couple weeks ago and uh it was there was like four long beards up here pretty happy about that but i am going to start coming up here and doing a little coon or coyote hunting because uh last time i was up here i was 
in my tree stand over here by the mineral site. And had a couple does coming in. I was like, okay, yeah, I you know, might get a doe with my new bow. Nope. They started blowing, going crazy, and I was like, yeah, it wasn't me. I know, because the wind wasn't blowing toward them. I didn't move. And uh, shortly after, man, I heard a coyote barking on the ridge across from us. And that thing chasing deer all day long, or all evening. So I just got out of the tree stand. And as I was leaving the tree stand, I seen a deer go running across the, the ridge beside of me. And sure enough, hot on its tail, there's a coyote. Luckily, I did see the, all the deer that it was chasing just above where I was hunting in the field. And didn't see any coyote. So I guess once it got up there closer to the road and stuff, it's like, oh, man, crap, I'm back out of here. It ain't worth it. And then turned around and came back, but... That's my plan for the off season. Maybe kill some coyotes up here, and definitely gonna turkey hunt up here. Um, don't know how the turkey hunt's gonna be up here because it's kind of a little rough to get around. But I also have to come up here and check out the neighbor's property because I got permission from them. So pretty stoked about that. I mean, all together it ends up being like a hundred and some extra. Or, a little bit more than 100 acres, so and they only rifle hunt. So, and then, uh, so I mean, I, don't, I might not have to do too much more, maybe put some feeders out there. Uh, maybe, uh, if I find a good spot over there that the deer aren't traveling over to here on, uh, but I like hunting this over here. Uh, a lot more um and the neighbor said this is a good spot too so we'll see but we'll be coming back at y'all a lot more this year at least i will and hopefully the other guys will will jump in and uh, we got i know timothy thomas and zach we're gonna be shooting uh 3d shoots um doing some traveling as long as the shoots are open and covid don't shut everything down we're gonna be doing that and then uh, just going to be coming back at you with, you know, summertime, getting everything ready through the summer and uh, everything else. I'm glad that, you know, we got the followers that we do now. You know, we've got 20 subscribers now, I think. And uh, this is a lot because we haven't done much on YouTube. We made a few videos um, this year and we really need to step up our game. We're not trying to get famous or anything. It's just it, we're all in it for fun. Um, but we need to get some more videos out there, and that's my plan. Um, get some more. I got more time this year. It's not rushed. Turkey season in, we should start getting stuff put in on turkey season. So for the subscribers that we do have, thank y'all. If you're not subscribing yet, Go follow us on, go like us, subscribe to our videos and stuff on uh, on YouTube. But thank y'all. God bless. Hopefully y'all had a good year in the deer woods. And hopefully y'all have a blessed year for 2021. Y'all be careful and stay safe out there.